Now that FreeBSD 13 is out and it's a tier 1 OS on the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to try it on a Raspberry Pi 400. So here we are, I've just flashed the uh, USB and I'm going to put it to 400. Do you know, it's always the way that it never goes in first time, it's always on the third try. Yeah, yeah, it's in that. Now, booting up. Lovely, lovely. The installation, uh, if you can call it an installation really, is uh, slightly different when you're using the Raspberry Pi. In the sense that there's no traditional uh, setup screen. Anything like that has to be done uh, post-install. Because it's an image, and all you do is just resizing the image, really. So, it's going to go through all the usual. I'm just going to fast forward the uh, slow bit. There we go. Nice login screen. And uh, the default login for root is root and root as a password. Right, you name. And as you can see, it is now on uh, ARM64. Very nice. Have a look at the networking. And we're using uh, Genet or GENet as the interface. Very nice. I need to use BST config just to set up my networking because uh, it goes a little bit funky sometimes. My router gives out the wrong uh, DSCP address. Right, that's better now. Now we can get going. First, I'm going to add a user. And just clear the screen. Go into root again. There we go. Now I'm going to use uh, PKG for the first time, so it's going to want to uh, do a little bootstrap. There we go. And it's so nice now that uh, free, you know, FreeBSD is tier one on the Raspberry Pi and ARM. Because then now we got regular updates and security updates, so it's uh, that to me that's a brilliant thing. It's a real game changer. Right now I'm just going to clear that. Now we can do a search for some uh, software. Let's have a look for uh, XFCE. No, I didn't think so. The thing is, when I was trying some of the release candidates, I found that uh, some software packages were missing because they haven't been built for ARM yet. Um, so let's clear that. Uh, we'll try, which I know is available, we'll try uh, Xorg. I mean, the thing is, in FreeBSD 14, which will be the next uh, major branch in the uh, snapshots, they have been built for uh, ARM. So you can get Firefox, you can get XFCE, all them, all the nice things. Um, but for now, we haven't, so uh, we're going to have to try and see what we can find. We're going to change quarterly to latest. Save that. And in this particular case, I'm using the uh, user local FreeBSD.conf rather than the actual main one. So update that, get the uh, latest branch. And we'll see if that makes a difference. And that's some upgrades, of course, some newer versions. So yeah, we'll see what's available. Um, I think it, it's not a problem because anything that's not available on uh, via the PKG, you can build using ports. No, the XFC is still not there. There's a few, you know, it's, it's no big deal. I mean, you can build them via ports, but I imagine on the Raspberry Pi it would take quite some time, so... Um, Foxbox is there, so we'll have to see what we'll do. This is only a quick look anyway, I'm not going in full review of it. That will be for another video. Uh, there's a lot of gnome stuff, but I don't think it's actually the main desktop. Nah, I didn't think so. You can build all these. Again, with Firefox, yeah, it's not available again. You can build these, but it will take such a long time. I'm going to try do it, actually, and uh, if uh, it gets done by the end of this video recording, I'll stick it on the end. If not, then uh, it doesn't matter. Regardless of what's available, I've already installed some uh, packages beforehand and got XORG running, so let's have a look. This is a Motive Window Manager session. My old uh, favourite. I, I do like this Window Manager. We've got Nedit installed. That works very well. Uh, hello, very nice. And one thing I do like is that everything is responsive. The menus pop up really quick, so there's no lag or delay in the Raspberry Pi. 
uh, what else did he uh, install? Oh, yeah, I installed uh, Silfeed, which is a nice email client. I haven't set it up yet. That's uh, it, It's a nice old school style, and I, I do prefer it rather than using uh, Gmail or a, a browser-based email uh, client. There's something about having uh, the emails pulled down onto your own machine and kept there so even even if the internet goes out you can still access all the emails that you've already received so i kind of like that and the other one is uh, otter browser one of the few browsers that i could find available um at the moment otter browser is a nice uh qt version it's fairly responsive just to open up that and move that down there and LibreOffice writer now the full LibreOffice is available i'll just need the writer part and this is really responsive on the uh, Raspberry Pi, which is really nice to know. Zoom to, uh, that's right, it looks better like this, I think. Type hello, obligatory hello. Make the font a bit bigger. Uh, that'll do. Very nice. Everything renders okay. So we've got a browser and uh, office suite. Move that there. And again, still feed. We've already seen that. So we've got Office Suite, Email, Client, and Browser. The three main things we need. There are other things, of course, and uh, but these will do for now. So yes, I could actually, um, as it is now, use this uh, as a desktop. Because that's really all I need. Um, of course, there are other software. I mean, be nice. Inkscape wasn't on there. I could build that and... Firefox and a few other things but as a quick look as a quick uh, dive into this because this is I did this only a few hours after uh, they were made available I think FreeBSD 13 is looking really good I think that it's uh, now tier one which changes the game somewhat I've got a USB stick with FreeBSD 13 on it keep it on there and yeah really nice so this really wasn't in the way of uh, any kind of guide or tutorial or anything it was just showing you that big strides have been made with FreeBSD 13 and Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi 400 is uh, is well suited to this actually very nice I just want to thank the FreeBSD Foundation and the FreeBSD developers who have uh, excelled themselves with this release uh, FreeBSD 13 heralds a lot of changes and uh, when I, which I'll show in a proper review of FreeBSD 13 later but yeah it's um, is a lot's changed in this release, and, and for the good. A lot of work that was sponsored by the FreeBSD Foundation has uh, come to fruition. The developers have stitched everything together nicely, and we're very lucky as a operating system community to have such wonderful... Uh, I'm not over-egging the pudding here. To have such wonderful developers and backers, really. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.